flow. Well, good morning, everybody. Thank you for joining us. This is another edition of our weekly real estate backstory where we talk about all the comings and goings, all the things happening in the real estate world. We kind of want to start off talking today about uh, there are several things happening with the lawsuits out there, but um, and, and it really does come down to the contracts and, and how things are being written. And so one of the first things is that, you know, there was a recent case over in North Carolina where it turns out that uh, well, the buyer was suing the agent and everybody else, yeah. stating that uh, the agent should have done uh, their fiduciary duty uh, in protecting the buyer. Well, but basically it, what it came down to was that, you know, our contracts are written in a, in a very particular way, especially the GAR contracts, which which we're big fans of GAR contracts. And I'm not trying to poo-poo RE contracts by any means, but the GAR contracts really do have a lot of protections in there for our uh-huh. sellers, for our buyers, and also for real estate professionals. And so, uh, you know, what happened was this is someone who did not read their contract and then turned around and said, well, you should have known uh, or, or, or you didn't give me good advice, even though I didn't need to read the contracts. I just, you know, uh, yeah. I just expected that, that you knew what was what was going on. I expected that you were you were perpe- you were protecting me, that kind of stuff. And it, what it was is a standard new construction contract where it has a lot of caviar. And so the buyer told the, um, the I'm sorry, the buyer's agent told the buyer, said, listen, you really need to get inspection, even though it's a new construction, and you really, yep. really need to do these things. So after the buyer moved in, decided the quality of the construction was not up to par, and then wanted the builder to fix items that equate to their estimate of $92,000. And this is where the lawsuit begins. Yeah. And so therefore, you know, it went actually went to court. And the, the judge decided that because the buyer did not read the contract, the agent has given an advice based on the buyer brokerage yeah. agreement. And therefore, that it was not a fiduciary duty or due diligence on the agent part. It was on the buyer's part. So read. Yeah. Yeah. Read your contracts. It's super important to do that. You know, with with all the other uh, conversations going on around contracts and commissions right now, you know, with, with the new lawsuit that's going on, um, you know, we've had our first, um, I'm not sure what the right way to put this is, uh, it is so that, you know, the real estate, the, the, the real estate board of New York. Um, Mandated. Yeah, well, well, what they did is, is they've gone in and they've changed this so that, you um, Buyer agent commission is now decoupled from listing agent commission. And so for it, at, at its original, the way it looks right now, it looks really troubling, right? Because, uh, but when you get into the details of it, it's not, it's, it's about semantics of it. And so like the way that our commissions are, or the way that buyer agents co-op commissions are written, written into listing agreements here in Georgia is that right now, let's say Ming's my, my, my seller. And so we agree that we're going to list the property for four five, six, seven percent, whatever, whatever percent it is. And then this is how much I'm going to share with the buyer's agent. What's going to be happening now and starting January in New York is it's going to be, this is the compensation that you're going to offer for your agent, for, for your listing side. agent. And then, and then, and then would the you like to, 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 and so instead of it being, this is the total amount of compensation. And then this is what you're going to share. Now it's going to be, this is what the, the, the buyer's agent commission would be. This is what the listing agent commission would be. And honestly, I'm not really that upset with that. Well, what this is, is that, you know, the form that I have, you know, if you took any of my classes on license law, ethics, or contracts, I always told you guys, your form 250F258 is your best friend because if you're practicing outside your um, area or what have you, send that in. It's basically a commission agreement from the seller prior to an offer being mm-hmm. submitted. And, and so what New York has decided is that the listing agent will get their compensation. On the buy side, they will have to negotiate or negotiate with the seller because only seller can make an offer of compensation. Right. But well, but but honestly, here this is not a bad thing for us. And and what I want you to understand is. You know, right now we have to go in and a lot of times you you talk to your seller and you say, you know, it's going to be, let's just say, 6%, 5%, whatever. And 
and they look at that total number as what you're going to be getting in compensation. It makes it much easier to say, this is how much, you know, these, these are the services I provide. These are the fees that I charge. And then this is what you're going to offer for the buyer's agent compensation as well. And so now it kind of splits that up in, in, into two parts. And so it's not necessarily bad news. It is, it is a change in semantics. It's not in place in Georgia. Do I see this kind of thing coming nationwide at some point? Potentially. Absolutely, it has the potential too. But what I, what we really want you to know is, is what when you hear things like decoupling buyer agent commission, it makes your spidey sense kind of go off. It Listen, worries the news, it worries agents. And, and, and the just you gotta understand. Are trying to give what's sensationalized. I was going to get the most yep. attention. So therefore, read the fine prints and understand what they're talking about. Yeah. So don't get freaked out by it. So, but you know, the, the, you know, the only constant we really have is change. So be ready for it. Correct. All right. So um, right now, the medium income because of interest rates continues to, to elevate right now. Right now here in Georgia, our median income needed is right around $100,000. Uh, and so your, your qualifying income is, is, has to be even higher. One of the big challenges we have right now is that home affordability is one of the biggest challenges. It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's, the, it's probably the single biggest barrier to home ownership, especially first time buyers, is housing affordability. Right now, affordability is, is really, really crushing us. And the source of that, interest rates, which went up again, six one hundredths of a point. So we're at 7.63 this week. So, you know, I remember when everyone was talking, was, was talking about, you know, can we survive at 6%? Can we survive at 5%? <laughs> that looks pretty good right now. Now, all of a sudden, it looks, it looks amazing, yeah. doesn't it? And so, with the interest rates rising, we're also seeing where mortgage applications is at its lowest since 1995. And that continues to be an important factor for us moving forward. However, you know, there's a recent study that just came out. And, and, and uh, the, here's the silver lining. Yeah. Well, is that, you know, did mortgage rates affect, you know, for, you know, for the last three months, uh, did mortgage rates, were mortgage rates a factor in the decision to purchase? And so for 4.7%, yes. yes, it was, it was, it was a really important factor. 15 said it was a factor, but not huge. 51% said no, regardless we're, we're buying. We got to buy. And another 23% were buying with cash. So 75% of our buyer pool of folks who have purchased homes were not rate driven. And that that's that's one of those things that we have to get into our head because it's very easy for us to talk ourselves or, or talk down about what's happening with our clients and, and what's their mindset. Like, like if you Just need remember, to move, you need to move. Media is going to always dictate what's sensationalizing and yeah. that's what makes news. So, but talk to your sphere and really talk to your buyer, understand what they're looking for and how you can help them in achieving that goal. Because yeah. that's, you know, at the end of the day, that's what this is all about. Well, and, and they went farther and they said, hey, listen, what's your primary reason for buying? And the first main reason was they're just they're tired. Liar. They're renting. tired of renting. They're ready to be buyers. They just wanted to own, uh, you know, it does break down. Well, Later on into your home, yeah, second, you know. they, they realize rent is never going to go down and they're just giving money away. And sometimes you have rent a uh, landlord that doesn't take care of the property. So what's the know, interest rate on a rental property? A hundred percent. That's the interest rate on a rental home. So uh, now at the same time, they, you know, they, you know, this, this is from NAR. And, they, and so they were like, um, you know, which of the following of any steps have you undertaken? And so what we're seeing for our buyers is they still want to buy, but if we know that affordability is issues so, right. I mean, or, or affordability is our issue. So then our buyers are getting creative and we have to be getting creative too. And so what we're seeing is that, you know, they're relocating to more affordable, affordable areas kind of thing. They're moving to a building with less amenities. They're moving to a cheaper, less desirable neighborhood. They're moving to smaller units. People are getting roommates, moving in with other family members. These are a big deal because do people still want to own homes? And parents, yes. you're not, you may not be an empty nester because well, some of the kids are going yeah, to talk about that in a second. Yeah, but like, like, but it's still at the end of the day, when it all when all the dust settles, why, you know, why do people want to own a home? 
because they, they do to own their own it, it's, home. it's just the natural desire to be a homeowner like, right. like like you know uh nothing can replace that factor of we just want to own our own home and so that continues oh, to be the big driving it's piece also here. A quality of life too yeah. so yeah absolutely so um now at the same time we have where family continues and, and is being a huge factor and so like, 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 why do people want to move to family? Well, because it really helps with pricing on, on, on a lot of different things from, you know, child care to health care to that kind of stuff. But like uh, family continues to be a driving factor for why people move, why people buy new homes, that kind of stuff. And then what we're also seeing is that more and more family members are purchasing homes with family members kind of thing. Uh, and so, you know, some are doing it with people other than their spouse, some are doing it with kids, some are doing it with parents. Uh, and so like, like we see co-buying going on. Yeah, you know, the, the interesting is that one of the highest rating was that the parents would buy a home with their child. Yeah. Uh, a lot of times, if you have a home where you have a basement with full kitchen ability, we see what we call multi um generation well, um, yeah it's multi-generational even household. Though single family home uh, and the the trick is is that zoning doesn't really allow most of you know, in, in in most of our areas the zoning for multifamily is multifamily and so uh whereas a lot of neighborhoods hoas even a lot of our local zoning doesn't permit you know multi-generational housing in most cases and therefore it makes it really hard to mm -hmm. find it in the mls you're looking for you know, uh, when when you're doing searches for that, you're looking for two kitchens and you're looking for things like that because you, you can't, if you're going to look up multifamily in the MLS, it's a very different kind of search that, that right. you end up with than what you're right. really looking for because you're still looking at, in most cases, single family, but multi-generation is really what you're looking for for those kind of folks who are looking to buy that kind of property. Now, at the same time, we're seeing overall total sales are down. Uh, all right, total, just the volume of sales are down. We're looking to be around and four million units. And yeah. this is normal. Well, some There's of it is, is, is this time of the year. Well, but but this is compared to the past year. So you can see it's in 2008, we were, we were the same way, just on the overall volume. And so even though we're seeing volume going down, we're not seeing prices necessarily going now, down. And that's the thing a lot of people still ask. Is yeah. my house going to be uh, le value less now with the interest rate? The thing is that a lot of sellers are still wanting to raise their rate, uh, their purchase price. We're seeing with that sell that, price up, and, and we see a lot of reduction because you know a average three to uh, sixteen hundred square foot in an okay school district, they're thinking that they can get. 354 and that's not the case yeah. i mean it's about location 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 and that's where we've seen some of the drops of the price because these sellers are pushing their home above the prior sale and it's not working with it today's interest rate but the good news for our buyers is that the the environment is becoming better for Great them for the buyers right Absolutely. now we're seeing what, what overall the percentage of buyers who are able to purchase with one offer meaning they go out and and the first offer that they put on a home is almost 40 percent 38 percent and so like, like it's good to see that you have a 38 40 percent mm -hmm. chance of winning with your first offer from a buyer's point of view it's a really powerful place to be Absolutely. so that you know that, that's good now overall a lot 50 of the largest metros in the u.s kind of thing uh most of the metros in the u.s now have values higher than they were last year however uh last month there was a lot of property a lot, a lot of municipalities areas that had declines in atlanta we were flat and so, you know, that, that's, you know, we continue to, to kind of buck the national trends on a lot of things like that. But what we are seeing is where right now we're seeing an uptick in listing, which is also good for our buyers, right? And so year over year, we're still down on, on, on new listings, but that trend is starting to change. You can actually see where we're actually growing inventory and no one, and we never grow inventory this time of year. Never in October do we grow. I mean, in September, October, we just don't normally grow inventory. And it looks like we may actually grow inventory in November if this trend holds true. And that's been 
never kind of thing. So the demand still out there. Once again, the ground inventory is not enough to satisfy the demand. So please keep that in mind. But also when you list a property, please be conservative. Um, and, and, you know, I understand all the seller wants to make as much money as yeah. they want. And I get it. Try that first. If it doesn't move, then you know you're too high within two weeks. Well, but that's what we're seeing is we're seeing that pending listings are down. So when you put down, when you put together pending listings down and inventory increasing, we're seeing where it's 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 slowly shifting mm -hmm. to a more balanced market. The idea of the seller holding all the cards is not real. And so we and got the to idea of seller yeah. not doing any repairs at all. And uh one matter of fact, one of my agents came to me well this past week when I just Happened bump into her and haven't seen it for a little bit. She said, I'm getting rid of the property, but man, it needs a hundred thousand dollar worth of work. She said, I sold to them seven years ago. It still looked the same, if not worse, because the buyer has made improvements uh, that are well, not finished. Yeah. And so therefore you got raw product, unfinished product um, that's in a home, even though it is a livable, habitable property. The fact is that a lot is got like, you know, he taught, he dusts off the popcorn and ceiling and now we got all these patches here and there. So, you know, it, it's just going to be a little difficult that, that, to sell. She that's knows that. in this market. You, you've got to drop the price on that. It's going to be price versus condition. Yeah. And the agent knows that. So. All right. But, you know, like overall, you know, like, like Zillow pulls up, puts out their, their, their forecast home value index. And so, They've downgraded that. And so, uh, you know, because they're seeing the same things we are, we're seeing where pending sales are down and inventory is increasing. And so that means that they're looking at it being much flatter. They're, they're only forecasting it to be 2.1%. Uh -huh. And they were looking at closer to six. So, uh, but anytime that you start talking about this, everyone starts talking about foreclosures. And, and look, look, here's the data, right? And so, our for, does has foreclosure starts upticked from last year. Yes, they're up three percent, but look at where we were. And so, yeah, big drop that, that you see in there. That's when COVID hit and all the foreclosure moratoriums, that kind of stuff. If you take out that whole dip, well, gosh, look. I mean, we're like, like we're still trending crazy low. Two thousand three, y'all, and we so. have been for twenty years, kind of thing. So, like, like foreclosure starts are really low. The other thing I want you to kind of pay attention to here is you can see that you know it's around seventy, eighty thousand foreclosures. Well, guess what? Out of those. That's that's how many foreclosures get started in U.S. This is where it actually ends up being, and so in Georgia. Like in the last three months, there was four close four thousand foreclosures started. Now, Only one thousand made it to actual foreclosure for the state of Georgia for the last three months, which makes it around three hundred and fifty properties a month statewide. And I will tell you, a lot of time those foreclosed homes are in a bad shape, uh, just because if it was moving ready, guess what? Yeah. The seller would got their asset out of the out of the house and move into a different location. Yeah, so you may see an uptick in for you know you well you won't see it you you're going to hear about an uptick in foreclosures, but this is the real numbers of what it really looks like. So is it trending up? Sure is. Is it something to worry about? Nope, not at all. It's not a place where we're going to see any any real inventory coming from at all, because people still don't want to lose their houses. And I and honestly. With as much equity as we have, why would you do foreclosure? Most of the time, you know, the foreclosure is where they just shove their head in the sand. Well, sorry. that and uh, the, the seller just not well aware of what their current value, or if it's a a um, basically a state, or you know someone that's out of state doesn't understand what the market value is, mm -hmm. and of course, some people giving them bad news like, "Oh, you'll never get any money out of this," and the payoff is this. You know, unless the folks try, they don't know for sure. Yeah. Now, one thing that we see, even though all the the negative press is uh, is kind of affecting residential real estate, well, the builders are feeling that too, and so our home builder building uh, building confidence has declined. Okay, and so you can see in the south, it's not as bad in some other places, but still nationwide, 
the builders are 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 worried about a lot of the same things that other well, sellers are. The you know, just worried because the interest, interest rate. Rates, yeah. You know, they they know that a start a home. You know, you got to make X amount of dollars. So, in not every location, you have that kind of median income. So, and and now what we're seeing is, you know, we we are still seeing single family starts are increasing. All right, so single family starts were up three to three three point two percent. Now multifamily just absolutely shot up out of the clear blue. No one was expecting multifamily to, 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 to go back up. We we had seen a decline in multifamily for last year, but they're still holding steady. But the builders are definitely a little bit apprehensive. Uh, a lot of that comes back to like like what's happening with rents, and so you can see that you know rents this year versus last year rents are down. All right, or or I mean like down from what it was. Where, where, what, what, yeah, and so you know it, it's it, it's still up like like in the Atlanta area, it's up a tenth of a point year over year, which is really just basically flat. Mm -hmm. uh, other places, but you can see that that's the national trend, right? The national trend is that rents are really really feeling compressed, and this is kind of what. What rents have looked like for the past year, kind of, or well, well, gosh, I'm sorry, for the past 18, 20 years, kind of thing. And so you can see that rents have come back down. And so, yeah, they, they shot up during the pandemic, that kind of thing. But rents are really back to being actually. Well, the average, if you well, look at the line, the graph where the foreclosure, the rent was down, of course, because of the, the value of the house was so cheap. And so now you look at, you know, just right across, we're right around the medium. Yeah, I mean, so like, like that, that's that's kind of where we're at. Now, what's interesting though is the difference between single-family attached versus detached rental prices. And so, what we're seeing is that because we, when rental, where rental really hits single-family residential, is is like like what's happening with single-family rents. And so, we are seeing a higher price. On single family rents, we're seeing single family rents are down too. No, I'm not saying they're not down. They're not down as much as multifamily rents are. It's really so what the apartment family, apartment rents are down more. The single family attached are like your townhomes where you have connection or condos. Oh. Um, well, it, it's 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 apartments really, oh, really? multifamily. But okay, well, so uh, the the detached those are single family homes. Correct. The detached. Correct. The anything attached would be would be the it, but it's going to be apartments as well as condos and townhomes it's all that whole group together and what we're seeing is that single families uh homes that are rented their rents are a little are are, are holding higher than than the rents for and, and a lot of that comes in, properties well and a lot of the, we've been building so many apartments townhomes condos that those properties are are, are cheaper uh, it's really, and they're, they're, you know, it's, it's based on supply versus demand. I don't want to tell you that though, the, the new apartments was, has so much amenities, whereas the older units don't, yeah. uh, those We're are not more seeing new apartment pricing going down at all. Right. And those are more yeah. desirable. So uh, they just released the new 2024 colors of the year. And I don't care if you look at Benjamin Moore, Sherwin-Williams, Valspar, everything is kind of leading towards a blue hue this year. And so, you know, uh, um, Home by Sherwin-Williams, HDTV is, is the only one who's kind of bucking the trend. Most everybody is going with like uh blues and, and that kind of stuff. So when, when you're talking to clients, like what's the color this year? Blue. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So this week, uh, tomorrow, I'll be teaching uh, introduction to, to RPR, Realtors Property Resource. That's going to be at the Noonan Coweta Fayette Board of Realtors. Uh, Noonan Coweta Board of Realtors, not Fayette. Sorry about that. On Wednesday, teaching effective negotiating. That's going to be in our Fayetteville office. So over on Thursday, we have mastering appraisals. It's great. Uh, great class, y'all, you know. especially with today yeah. uh, when you have appraisal issue because appraisers yeah. are being gun shot like everybody else is right now. Yeah. So therefore, you know, understand what you can advise your client and and improving for maximum return um, for minimal expense. So if you guys have a great week, if we can be any service, please call Tech Smoke Signals. Thank you and have a great have Monday. Bye, everybody. Bye-bye.